We are getting tips, naming names, you name it. From places like Canada, I'm going to withhold names until we've interviewed the people and to protect their identity. Hi, my name is, we're not going to say the name, my wife works in a law firm in New Westminster, B.C. Her employers, husband and wife, just returned from a trip to Africa, and now his wife is sick with vomiting and diarrhea. She went to the hospital and was tested for Ebola, but was sent home. The doctors were wearing protective gear and masks. I stressed to my wife that she shouldn't go to work until they are sure she does not have Ebola. But my wife was stressing that Ebola is not airborne, and she just won't have physical contact. Oh, man. There was a chance somebody's got Ebola from West Africa. You can They can touch a counter. You touch it. They can sneeze. It's in the droplet. You get it. It may be airborne. Airborne, technically, folks, just means the virus or bacteria floats around in the air and can live. It doesn't mean the person doesn't sneeze and then it floats into your room and you get it. Do you understand that? I told my wife in August the Canadian Health Services has started on a website that it was a highly probable that Ebola could be airborne, and they took the information down as an outspread fear, but the possibility is still high. Just thought you might like to know this. InfoWars is the only alternative true media that I trust and speak the truth. Well, thank you, sir. We'd like to confirm more of this with you and the other people that are telling us similar things. We have confirmed the Border Patrol agents' names. The Dr. Group is coming in, and it dovetails uh, with the um, other information that we've gotten from the head of the Border Patrol Union, the retired Border Patrol Union. So that's all coming up as well. That story by Paul Watson should be going up at any time. It is now on screen. It just went live. Former Border Patrol agent, print that for me, guys. Thank you. Former Border Patrol agent, CDC disappearing potential Ebola victims, illegal aliens with illnesses being secretly quarantined. And again, Watson did that off this interview he had said two months ago. But we, and it's in the article, we may need it as a subheadline that InfoWars, just group reports for us, InfoWars reporter has, has met in the last two days with other Border Patrol that have confirmed this is currently happening. That's the key to this. That's the key to all this. So Dr. Group uh, is going to be uh, joining us in studio. He flew in last night from Vegas at one of the biggest medical slash nutramedical shows uh, in the country where he had dinner with and met with quite a few Border Patrol, ICE, you name it, senior people. And they mentioned the gentleman that's in the video, the head of the Border Patrol Retiree Union, who's been a guest on the show, by the way. Former Border Patrol agent Zach Taylor has divulged that the CDC is working with Border Patrol authorities at the Department of Homeland Security to disappear potential Ebola victims attempting to cross the border of the United States. And that's a good job, Watson. I just think Watson should put a paragraph. I know he's here. It's great having Watson and Austin with us. He's here for another week. Um, just to say up front that, that 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 our reporter, Dr. Edward Group, met in Vegas at a trade show with Senior Border Patrol that confirmed this is happening now, that they, they've seen this. this. This is now going on with people. Not just they were grabbing people that might be sick and disappearing, which is a whole scandal on its own, but that they're in hazmat suits and vans. That's key. And then Watson's got another bombshell coming out. And that should be by the end of the hour. Watson's a very prolific, quick writer, great job. Uh, it's just that it's not just Zach Taylor saying this. We talked to others that confirmed it's currently going on. Infowars.com, prisonplanet.com, red linked right now, New York City on alert. There's unease on the big Red River shootout between uh, UT and Oklahoma this weekend. People are scared. Yeah, I mean, I I think any big, huge public event, you're just asking for it. Ladies and gentlemen, I am your host, Alex Jones. Red linked on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Right now is this headline. Former Border Patrol agent, former deputy head of it, former head of the union, now head of the retiree union, Zach Taylor, CDC disappearing potential Ebola victims 
illegal aliens with illnesses being secretly quarantined. And they and we're having this added to the article because he just got it out quickly. We have video of Taylor talking about it, but the issue here is his name was brought up by the Border Patrol agents, some of them senior, that Dr. Group met with this weekend in Vegas, who were at the big medical, nutramedical, uh, biggest you know supply side event in the country by the actual you know developers, pharmacists, scientists, uh, you name it. They were there trying to find out how to protect themselves and their agents and their families. They were sent there by the Border Patrol. And they said, well, Zach Taylor warned of it months ago. And I said, Zach Taylor, he's been on. He's the union guy. And then it turns out over a month ago, he did this video that got no attention that's up on Infowars.com saying he believed Ebola could come across, was coming across. Now the head of Southcom says it could be, and they believe it will if it gets into South America. They're now in the news, mainline news today, saying they're picking up people that are sick out of West Africa. That's in my Ebola stack. I'm going to go to that in a few minutes, and I'll show that to TV viewers on the document cam. Radio listeners can go to Infowars.com. We have that article posted. I think it's AP. Yeah, it's AP. So all of that is unfolding and happening right now. And Dr. Group there, developing products for us, was able to talk to a lot of these senior people and medical doctors and others about what they're seeing and what's unfolding as Oklahoma City Hospital isolates a patient exhibiting possible Ebola symptoms, as Ebola pops up in Spain and other areas from them bringing in these Ebola patients, never before done. But former Border Patrol agent Zach Taylor has divulged that the CDC is working with Border Patrol authorities and the Department of Homeland Security to literally disappear potential Ebola victims attempting to cross the border in the United States, and there's no news coverage, no paperwork signed, they're put in vans and disappeared. Now we confirm that there's huge forces of vans and guys in literal spacesuits, like in Hollywood movies, grabbing people, and the Border Patrol goes, where are they going? Sign the form, and they go, uh-uh, slam the door. Group's going to tell you about this. So they brought up Taylor. He was saying his name. I went, wait, we know him, went and checked. He confirmed this a month ago. But this is currently going on. So we need to get back with those sources where they suggest we go. McAllen, Brownsville uh, in Texas, or do we go to the Arizona border? Do we go to the California border? We need to show this because, because if they are doing their job, that's a good thing. But why would they be covering it up so there's not a panic? Undoubtedly, you got major African countries basically on the verge of collapse or collapsing. That's in the news, that, that term. African countries on the verge of collapse or are collapsing. You know, they're saying stay in your houses in Liberia, don't, no public gatherings. I mean, this is, this is crazy. UN models, 1.4 to 5 million to get it by December. I don't know if that's accurate, but Dr. Group joins us to talk about this. In the interview, the 27-year Border Patrol veteran, Taylor, uh, was first contacted nearly three months ago in July, but InfoWars separately confirmed through other sources that the process was ongoing in the aftermath of America's first case of Ebola, which occurred in Dallas last week. They are literally grabbing people and disappearing them into vans. This is so big on so many fronts. Why would they be doing their job and doing this, keeping it quiet, Dr. Group? But then at the same time, and I want to hear it from your own words, you know, debrief you here on air. We'll have you in the next hour. Why would they be doing that, A, but B, then leaving the planes open to fly folks in, and now they admit they're not doing even the heat screening. They're asking, do you feel okay? Well, someone fleeing Ebola or who has it, who wants treatment for them and their kids, they're not going to say, hey, I got Ebola or, hey, I think I got Ebola. They just want to live. I mean, all the other countries have sealed their borders. The other African countries have. So what do you think is going on here? Tell us what happened when you were in Vegas at this big trade show. Well, <clears throat> There's a lot of stuff going on that I didn't really know about, and that's one of the reasons why that I went to Vegas because these the scientists that were coming together there were all focusing on what can we do about this Ebola situation, at least a lot of them were. And some of these guys I haven't met with for years and years and years, but it was more of like a meeting of the minds and, and coming together to see what's really going on. And I was pretty shocked. I have like four pages of notes that I wrote down because – the stuff that I found out is not being talked about in mainstream media. It's you have the floor. Go, go through what the Border Patrol told you first, uh, what these senior agents told you, and, and then and then get into the whole list. Well, what what uh, I was shown a video of the guy that, that was talking about what's going on down at the border, and these guys know and have connections down there. And what they're saying is that people are being that anybody with Ebola likes. They were confirming people, Taylor. They were confirming that never before has the CDC and the National Institute of Health worked so closely with Border Patrol. 
and that they were down there uh, grabbing individuals and putting them in vans and taking them to a quarantine location. And at that location, basically nobody knew, knows where they were taking them to. Nobody knows what they're doing with them. I mean, are they trying experimental vaccines on them? Are they, you know, taking their blood? Are they, I mean, who knows what's going on? You know, I don't know if my main focus is what we can do to educate the people about how to protect themselves. But at the same time, you have to get the information that's that's out there and then look at it and see if you can confirm everything. Um, you know, I just flew in last night and just this morning typed up all these notes so it would be fresh on your show today to share this information with all your listeners because it's important to know what's going on so you can come to a conclusion on what you need to do and, you know, what's really happening because obviously when the, the mainstream media is out there saying one thing, it's it's something else that's going on at the same time. So uh, <clears throat> other things on my list that I found was that the CDC was getting calls from doctors all across the nation. Uh, I had talked to a guy that uh, was, you know, heading up some underground stuff for Ebola, and he said that doctors are seeing patients with Ebola-like symptoms and calling the CDC, and about half of those calls are going um, unanswered or the CDC is not following up on those calls. Um, you know, different changes that are happening with the CDC and the WHO changing up their website, basically saying that now, uh, you know, it possibly could be airborne, which we talked about before. But just think about it. I mean, if you cough, if you sneeze, those are droplets of bodily fluids. Uh, I talked to one guy that was uh, telling me that the CDC is now warning airline crews to start using masks. You know, why, why would they be warning people to use masks if it's not airborne? Uh, another thing that's happening is the government is cracking down on natural health care companies right now, too. I mean, there's a big attack on anybody advertising anything about Ebola. There's an attack on colloidal silver. <clears throat> you know, anything, they're, they're scouring the websites out there to see who's advertising anything natural against Ebola. But the thing is, I mean, the easy solution is just keep your immune system strong, and you should be able to, to fight it off. Um... You know, usually with Ebola in the past, you have, this was another guy that was talking about how the, the transmission, you know, the indigenous tribes that are in the jungle usually get Ebola from eating monkey meat or something like that, and then they pass it to the city. But the strange thing about this is three cities at, at about the same time, uh, the Ebola was released in the city. So it's actually the, the mechanism of action of spread has been reversed instead of jungle to city. It's now city to city to city. So that was an interesting point because that would make you want to look at how all of a sudden did Ebola get released inside three cities at the same time. So that was a, uh, that was interesting. Um, another thing that, that they were talking about, somebody had some friends at Emory University, and they said that it took 40 bags of medical waste a day from the three infected Ebola patients that were at Emory University. So you can imagine if three patients create 40 bags of medical waste a day, what would happen with 1,000 patients or what would happen with, you know, 5,000 patients? I mean, there's no possible way to control that much waste. And the fact that there are only four hospitals in the U.S. that are technically qualified to handle pandemic outbreaks. And let's just go back. It used to... <clears throat> incubate over three days. Now it's 21. The virus has just mutated off the chart. This right. is this is very suspicious. Yes, um, you know the Ebola virus is kind of like the influenza virus because it will mutate, and that's a reason why you know I don't know how you're going to possibly come up with a vaccine with a virus that mutates like the influenza. But um, you know what's happening also is that if you look at what's happening in well the whole quarantine thing has just been completely taken out of control we should have shut our borders to any type of flights but another topic that was that we talked about was the fact what's going on with the military over there why are we sending military when we should be sending doctors it's a pandemic they need doctors not military so what was reported back to me was it was kind of a drill to see how to quarantine for uh, medical martial law in the United States. Where they're literally going door to door, the military, pulling people out that have Ebola-like symptoms. And our military's and, definitely going to get it. 
And then yeah. that'll be covered up. They'll use them for guinea pigs as well. And they're taking them to quarantine areas. And now the family, the families know this too. So they're trying to hide people. So th th what this is is a plan to see how they're going to react into the United States. It's, it's, it's to create a cadre here. brigade. That's why it's 5,000 to come back and train the rest of the brigades. Yes. And now what happens when you take everybody and put them in quarantine? Well, all this is how the economy uh, collapses real fast because how does the food get from the farm? Nobody wants to go to work if there's a quarantine and they can't leave their own homes. So you have distribution that's, that completely comes to a halt. You have food production that comes to a halt. The food can't get to the grocery store stores you know every single worker all the waste workers the government workers don't go to work and when you take everybody away from going to work we're going to break it, it, the it, economy starts to crash it means societal collapse level event dr Edward groups our guest infowars.com has the breaking news and the article is being expanded as we speak former border patrol agent senior agent cdc disappearing potential ebola victims it's currently going on we have breaking news in the next hour. Turns out those FEMA coffins, CDC does want them to put as many as four dead people apiece into them. That article's breaking at Infowars.com the next hour. Dr. Ed Group is our guest. We'll open the phones up in the next hour with Dr. Group. I'll just keep you the whole two hours that we've got left or an hour and 30 minutes, 35 minutes now, if you can do it. Uh, Doc, continue getting into, you're at this big medical conference, doctors, scientists, epidemiologists, virologists, border patrol, pharmacists, uh, developers, chemists. You're there talking to them, and everything you're saying has already been separately confirmed. You were talking about how in Africa they call them these community care centers, but really they're just death camps. Well, that's even been in the back of the news that they just take them and lock them up behind barbed wire and shoot them if they try to get out. But notice how they call them a community care center. And then now this model being used on the illegals to just disappear them and not talk about it, that could be anybody next. And once they set that precedent of just go arrest this person, put them in a truck, it's compartmentalized. That can be the smoke screen for a political purge as well. We've always said a big bio scare or a bio weapon attack or a natural pandemic could be the cover for the takeover. One of the big ones. And now right on time, here it is. Dr. Group, continue. Well, you know, that's from what we're hearing. They're really just nothing more than death camps over there. But, you know, it's the media takes the, they're, obviously the media is not going to come out and say death camps over in Africa. So they're going to, they're going to call it community care centers. And so, uh, you know, it's the spin that you're getting over here that, you know, we're actually there trying to help and, and trying to contain this. And by the way, you do have to lock them up and, and things are breaking yeah. down. And sorry if there's not enough food or water, but, but be honest about the tragedy. Do airlifts of food. Don't just warehouse them and kill them. Where's Jesse Jackson when you need him? Yeah, exactly. Um, let me see some of the other Because if it does that... collapse, then they're going to spill out. One of the other What did the head of Southcom say three days ago? We're going to play the video coming up. They said they could get into South America, collapse it. It's going to collapse into us. So are they beefing up the border? What else? I want to go back into your list, Dr. Group, but what okay. else did the Border Patrol agents say when you were watching videos and talking to them? Were they concerned? You told me that, that they had confirmed and seen and talked to others that had seen exactly what he was saying and that they were literally pulling up in vans and suits and throwing people on the backs of vans. And the Border Patrol would say, well, you got to fill out a form. And they'd say, no, we don't. I mean, I mean, break that down. What else yeah. did they say? That's pretty much it. I mean, the only other thing that they were talking about was, and I haven't confirmed this, is that Homeland Security restricted all of the ammunition to the Border Patrol until 2015. That was actually confirmed. No, no, that was mainstream yeah. news three months ago. Okay, so that basically they were just talking about Yeah, they won't about supply that. them. So, they have to buy it themselves. And they, can't, and they can't do their training or anything like that. Homeland Security has almost 3 billion rounds now, but the Border Patrol can't have any. Right. Guys, type in Border Patrol uh, ammo shortage. It was, I think, Breitbart and AP. Go ahead. Yeah, basically what they were saying is it's just strange that the, the CDC and the National Institute of Health has never worked with the Border Patrol before, and then all of a sudden now they're down there and they're just taking, you know, anybody with symptoms. That The border's just wide open. We know that. But they're trying to pinpoint people, and they're just taking them somewhere. I mean— I don't know where they're taking them, I guess, to... Probably to deploy place. them to each school or everywhere to spread it. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not kidding. No, I know. Probably to take them in different areas of, of the United States. And that's another one of the things that we were talking about earlier is the doctors are reporting that 
they're getting patients in different areas of the United States with Ebola-like symptoms. And these are doctors. I mean, the people I talk to are, are very, very well versed in pandemics, disease, scientists. I mean, these are guys that have been around for a while, just like me. I've been studying natural remedies for viruses, bacteria, pandemics, all this stuff, you know, for years and years and years. So, you know, really to give everybody solutions. So what they're saying is that, you know, they're, you know, these guys, are, these scientists are telling me and these doctors are telling me that their friends are actually seeing patients that might have Ebola-like symptoms and calling the CDC. And the CDC is getting about 20 to 40 calls a day. Like I said, I, you know, I don't know how to confirm that. I'm just relaying what I heard. Oh, I'd imagine they're getting hundreds of false reports an hour with Probably. the panic going on in the country. But if they're bringing in Ebola patients and they've now spread it in Spain, if they're letting people fly in from West Africa, it's a guarantee there's going to be more cases. It's a guarantee it's going to spread. I mean, this is incredible. How do you, why do you think government's doing this? Well, looking and analyzing what happened with the swine flu and some of the other H1N1 stuff like that, I think this is, um, this is a test, and it, it might be the big one. I mean, it might be that, that this is the one that they're really, they've set up all those government camps for. If you look at every single piece of the puzzle, you know, the what's going on at the border, all the camps that have been set up, the fact Stay that there. Let's come back to that when we get back. Yeah, my gut has just been off the chart concerned the last year, as everybody knows. And notice they're dropping the border. They're starting war with Russia. They're turning loose al-Qaeda. They're devaluing the dollar. They're shutting off the power plants. They're announcing our kids belong to them. They don't seem to care what we say or do. They don't care how unpopular they are. They laugh at us. Are they getting ready to release an airborne strain? I mean, there's no telling what they'll do. They're open exterminist, eugenicist. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Stay with us. Globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs and then concentrated for maximum potency potency super male vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals super male vitality by infowars life is so powerful that i only take half the recommended dose for a limited time we are offering 15% off Super Male Vitality at InfoWarsLife.com to introduce you to this powerful supplement. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality. InfoWarsLife.com. 